everything. Let me paint a picture for you guys. You're playing a pretty standard game of CK3. You know, killing some peasants, killing some disobedient vassals, maybe even killing some of your own kids. And over the course of this game you realize, hey, all this killing has amassed me a pretty healthy amount of piety. Maybe I should spend this piety on creating my own religion to help me do better in this game. Well, if you have ever been in this situation, or even just wanted to create your own religion in CK3, but have been overwhelmed by the plethora of options available to you, then do I have the video for you. Today we are going into the proverbial build a religion workshop, where I will be providing you with hands down the best custom religions you can make for military domination, gold making, breeding your dynasty, or speeding up your nation's R&D programs. So there are two ways that you can actually create your own faith where you'll be able to choose all of the tenets, beliefs, and structure of the religion. And the first way you can do that is actually to create a new type of faith in the religion that you are already a part of. I'm fucking leaving! So you can see right here, we are actually a Catholic ruler. So we can go ahead and create a new Christian faith by clicking on that button right there. And from here, we will be able to change the tenets and all of the doctrines. Um, involved with this new Christian faith. And the second way that you can actually make your own religion is to reform a unreformed religion. If you do plan on using any of these cookie cutter religions, which I am going to tell you about in this video, you should be sure to pick up the profit perk right over here because what it does is actually reduce the cost of reforming or creating a new religion by 50%, saving you a ton of piety. But this brings us to our first cookie cutter religion, and that is the Warmongers religion. If I know CK3 players, then I know that a good portion of your guys' favorite part of the game is declaring war against other poor, unsuspecting realms. And who could blame you? Managing your military and winning battles against your enemies to acquire their land based off totally valid claims is one of the most enjoyable parts of this game. So what if you could make a religion which would greatly help you conquer the known world? But what would this warmonger's religion look like? Well, let's just jump right into the create a religion menu so I can show you. So once you have either decided to create a new religion or reform an old one, you'll be brought to this menu right here, from which you can switch out tenets or switch out doctrines at the cost of piety. So the first two tenets that I'm going to get you to plug in here are the Pursuit of Power and the Unrelenting Faith tenets. First of all, the Pursuit of Power actually gives you a minus 50% to your tyranny that you gain during this game, which is normally something that you'll get a little bit of when you're doing a war. But the more important bonus that this tenet offers you is actually some additional causes bellies for declaring war on neighboring realms, as well as another type of causes belly that you can only do once per lifetime. As for the Unrelenting Faith tenet, this one actually gives all of the characters under this religion a plus 4 to their prowess, which helps a lot if you are sure to be converting all of your knights. And it also gives you a little bit of a bonus in the battle modifier when you are fighting somebody who has a hostile faith. The third tenet that you're going to choose for this Warmonger's religion will actually depend on what your original religion is. There are certain restricted tenets that are only available if you are coming from a certain starting religion as you can see here. So if you're a Catholic for an example, you'll have access to this armed pilgrimages tenet. And this tenet right here actually makes it less expensive for you to declare holy wars on enemies, which is a really great war type that can get you a lot of land really quickly. It also lets your head of faith declare crusades for certain pieces of land, which is always a fun war type that you can get involved in. If you are a Islamic ruler and you want to reform one of the Muslim faiths, then you will not have access to the armed pilgrimages tenet anymore, but you instead will have the struggle and submission tenet, which grants you plus 50% piety and devotion from winning holy wars, which is actually super helpful for, for moving you up in those religious tiers. The doctrines for this religion can be whatever you want. In my opinion, there's not too many things in here that will actually change the way you want to play if you're going for a war-heavy game. You can see the total cost if we are reforming from a Catholic religion is actually going to cost us 3,375 piety, so be sure to pick up the profit perk so that you can cut this down in half. So this brings us to our next religion, which is for 
those of you who want to make heaps and heaps of gold in this game. And if you guys watch my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of making a lot of money. I find the second you get a large income, every part of this game becomes easier because you can buy more men, buy better buildings, and you just snowball off of it. For this one, there are really two tenets that are important, and only one of them is actually available for all of the religions, and that one would be the tax non-believers tenet. And this, this tenant can be really good because as you can see, it actually gives you a plus 20% tax on regions that have a different faith than you. So it can work really well where you hold your capital county and you convert that one to your religion, but maybe you let all of your other counties remain as the other religion. And what that would mean is that you're just going to be getting a pretty much flat out 20% bonus to the tax you generate from all of those counties. The second tenet that you can see right over here is pacifism. So this goes directly against anybody who's going to want to declare wars against their enemies because it actually does not let you declare a holy war or raid. However, what it does give you is a bonus of plus one domain limit. And let me tell you, in the beginning of the game where your characters may be only able to hold three to five domains, having this plus one is a huge boost. And since it is your religion, it's going to carry down through all your characters, helping you that little bit extra. The third one I went with right here is this tenant that reduces the construction time and construction cost of making temples and the buildings in them. I find normally this really doesn't help that much because I'd rather be building cities or other castle holdings in my extra baronies. However, if you combine it with actually switching this doctrine right over here called clerical tradition. If you switch this to lay clergy, you'll actually be able to hold your own temples instead of having to grant them to a priest. And then this perk will actually come into effect greatly as building and holding a temple will count just the same as holding another castle. So how about a religion for the intellectual Crusader Kings 3 gamer? A player who doesn't care for the quick glory that comes with winning a war or making a few bucks. Well, if you want to leave your mark on the world for hundreds of years to come, then this research and development religion is perfect for you. The first perk which you can go with here is Esotericism, which simply enough just makes the wise man trait, which you can pick up from a learning education focus, a virtue. One option that you could do is if you were playing as a Abrahamic religion, again that means either Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, you can switch this tenet out for the literalism tenet. And what this does I find is a little bit better than esotericism, where instead of making the wise man a virtue, it actually makes the top two tiers of the learning education focus a virtue, and I find those are a lot easier to get. The second tenet that you can go with is the Gnosticism tenet, which actually is quite simple. It gives you a bonus of plus two learning on all of the characters of this new religion, and the plus two learning is going to help ever so slightly raise the speed of your research. However, it does come at the cost of minus two stewardship. And the third trait that I would suggest to use in this religion is only available if you're coming from a Christian background, and this is actually the Alexandrian Catechism. And this tenant very simply just gives you a plus 20% bonus to all of your, your learning lifestyle experience, which is again a perk tree that you're going to want to go down if you're going to want to do a heavy research and development game. So getting the extra 20% goes a long way over here. Well, well, well. I put this one last because I knew it would keep you sick bastards around to the end of the video. Next, we have a religion which will help you breed your perfect dynasty in Crusader Kings 3. Before we talk about the tenets, we're going to have to switch a couple things in the marriage doctrine first. The first thing we're going to switch is, is this doctrine down here, which shows you what kind of marriages are allowed. And we're going to have to switch this one on unrestricted marriage, meaning that we will be able to marry close family members, which is of course necessary for any type of inbreeding slash eugenics program type game. What that'll let us do is actually choose this divine marriage tenet, which is a pretty cool one as it actually gives you a positive opinion with vassals of the same fate for marrying a close family member, which means if you marry your sister, all of your vassals will have plus 10 opinion of you. And the second thing you get 
a large amount of piety for marrying a close family member. As if the reward of marrying your sister wasn't great enough already. What? So for our next tenant, we actually have to make sure to switch up some of these crime doctrines. We're going to want to set both of these adultery doctrines to accepted, which just means that if you're caught having a relationship outside of your marriage, you actually don't get any negative penalties from that. And the tenant that that will actually let us pick up is this one right here, polyamory, which just guarantees that you do not receive opinion penalties or imprisonment reasons for extramarital relationships. And the last perk that we are going to get for our breeding religion is monasticism, which doesn't really help with having kids or marrying your sister, but what it does do is let you ask some of your kids to become monks. And if you are playing this game, if you are playing this type of game correctly, you're going to be having a lot of kids per character. So having another way of disinheriting them is definitely always helpful. The other good thing about this religion is all three of these do not depend on what, what religious background you're coming from, meaning you can do this no matter what section of the map you're playing in. Those are all the build a bear religions that I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about casting a wind bolt on that subscribe button, or even becoming a member of the channel. Also be sure to let me know if you could make any of these religions even better with maybe some different tenets or some different doctrines. That's it for me guys, see you in the next one.